Hi, this is Brian Klug with Anontech, and in front of us today we have the Nexus S. Um, so this is the new Google phone running Android 2.3 Gingerbread. Um, so let's, I wanted to show off the UI and what's different and how it compares to the old Nexus one. Uh, so let's, let's jump into it. So of course you, you saw right there the awesome power off animation, uh, which looks just like a CRT. Um, so I could spend all day just doing that, but it looks really impressive in person, especially with the, uh, really high contrast AMOLED. Uh, so anyways, let's go inside. So, I mean, the number one thing that's changed is that there is a completely new, uh, completely new color scheme. So of course the, uh, the gray at the top here has been replaced with black, uh, and the shade itself is black. Um, so of course that's, that's going to help battery life on AMOLED displays like this one. Uh, the other major thing are that the icons at the top are a little bit different. Um, there's less there's less clutter around them and they're very high contrast and easy to read. Um, they also grow, glow different colors based on what you're connected to. So right now they're green, uh, meaning we have an active connection to Google servers for sync. Uh, so pushing email, doing all your contacts, that sort of stuff. So I mean, if we turn off if we turn off Wi-Fi, you'll see they go gray. Um, and then we get 3G, and then as that data connection comes back up, they're green. So we're back synced again. So if we could if we put Wi-Fi back on, then you'll see that that will gradually come up and do the same thing. Uh, the other big thing here on the home screen is that we have a, a link to manage apps. And also notice that this is this is now black. So, um, and in addition, it's sort of transparent. So, I mean, before it used to be transparent, but now you can really tell that it is transparent because uh, of the contrast. But if you jump into manage apps, uh, you can see that now there's a lot there's a lot more going on. You have this little thing at the bottom that will tell you, you know, like how much storage have you used uh, internally, and if you go to downloaded, uh, and then of course USB storage. Um, so we haven't used much of that uh, couple of uh, that like 13 gigabytes that we have partitioned as USB storage, which is really external. Um, and of course these checkboxes at the side that correspond to apps that we have on the USB uh, storage. So we can move it back to phone. Um, and then you'll see this checkbox uncheck as soon as that's done. Yeah, just like that. Um, of course, running is nice too because you can see actually how much stuff is using RAM uh, and your RAM that's free uh, down at the bottom here. Although, you know, closing things really fast still, still requires going into each thing and saying, you know, like kill it, you know, get rid of it. Uh, we can't kill the wallpaper, of course, but, you know, you, you have to kill it from stop. But, I mean, the applications management side of things is improved. Uh, other other major thing is how much faster this cube switcher is, uh, the which is the stock launcher. Uh, I mean, you can't really. I don't think the video is gonna really show this, but it's just it's stupid smooth. You know, like 60 FPS. Um, if you bring in a Nexus One and just compare, um, of course it's not an apples to apples comparison because this is running uh, older system on chip. But I mean, if you just scroll around here. I mean, you can just tell how much, how much, you know, how much more that thing chugs along. Um, you know, some of that, some of that is that this is now hardware accelerated for certain. Uh, there's a lot more touch filtering, so we're getting better inputs. Uh, Dalvik VM is doing a lot more garbage collection really fast. Uh, so there's just a host of improvements that really build to that smoothness. Um, and then of course the, the transition back to the home screen is really, really smooth. Uh, so I mean that sort of stuff is really what, what feels faster. Um, of course this Nexus wallpaper is a little bit changed too, not sure why that's important. Um, now if you go into call settings at the bottom here is SIP calling. Uh, and you can change the settings so like if you want every call to go over, uh, over SIP, uh, over VOIP, you can say that. If you want it to ask, you know, you can do that too. Uh, inside, you can you can opt to receive incoming calls at the expense of battery life. Um, hopefully, nobody starts calling me. Uh, inside of uh, the details, you can't really change too much. I was expecting to see some different codecs. Um, unfortunately, the the options are pretty you know pretty basic. Some credentials, you know, what do you want to do? Transport. Um, it's going to save as we exit. But the SIP calling is nicely integrated. So if we come in here and we want to call. Uh, it'll ask us, do you want to place that over the cell, over the internet, for VoIP, let's do internet. I mean, it, and it's, it works just the same as normal call. I mean, of course, it says internet call. Zero, zero. Remarks. Density 
I guess my only complaint is that this is much quieter than it would be if you're doing it over the normal network, uh, at least on speakerphone. Um, not certain why that is. It's kind of a disappointment, but I mean, uh, over the handset, it sounds about the same. If you place this over the cell phone, you can really hear the difference. Um, of course, it's busy right now because we just called. Let's try again. Yeah, but the normal switch call, the plain switch telephone network, uh, or plain old telephone network, if you like, uh, is much louder. Um, of course, we have places uh, and near field communication reading. Uh, so, I mean, places is is one thing that's specific to the Nexus One at this point. Uh, but you have the tag reader, which shows you all the tags that you've scanned. Um, but you don't need to be in the tag reader for near field communication to work. So, if you bring in, uh, this is the big places tag that Google has supplied. So, here I'll turn the phone off, turn it on, unlock it. You don't need to do anything except for bring the device over it and then it will instantly read the tag. So I mean, let's, you can really just see how fast that is. So we'll, we'll delete this, um, bring it back in. I mean, it, look at it, it just instantly reads the thing. Um, and it'll just keep doing that. So I mean, you can have fun just waving it over here. Um, sometimes it won't read it if you don't, if you don't leave it on top. Um, but it, it works really well and in a variety of different orientations, right? So you can, you don't need to be portrait. It's orientation insensitive, just like you'd expect uh, magnetic induction to be. Um, so that, that works really well. Uh, and we'll see more, more, all sorts of different tags. So right now, I mean, it's, it's really flexible too, right? There's no, I couldn't find any hard points inside. Um, I mean, you can like totally crease it, you know, stick it out, it'll still read. Yeah, there we go. Um, so sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Uh, of course, in settings, we've also got the option to change uh, whether we want this on or off. Um, you don't really get, you don't really gain any battery life. Uh, I mean, sure, it's drawing you know in the tens of microamps, but uh, in the greater scheme of things, that's really nothing compared to how much how much you're going to incur from screen draw, right? Uh, but you can turn it off if you so please. Um, the other things are the keyboard, which is vastly improved. So, I mean, if we come inside uh, and start typing, I've already got a little message typed out. Let's try it. You can see how much better this is. Um, really, just because of multi-touch, so you can do things like hold down shift and H, uh, you know, hold down shift and a key. Uh, the other big things are, you know, you can hold this down. It doesn't have any accented characters. Hold down E, and then we can just swipe over, which is just how things work on the iOS, um, but now, they, now they're in here as well. You know, whereas it, before you had to do this, then release and go over it and select what key it was. And, you know, if you're, if you're in between platforms a lot, that can get confusing. Um, so, I mean, you can see that. Let's compare it to the old way. Uh, let's delete this. So, I mean, if we wanted E, you couldn't just go up, right? See, I mean, it, it kind of messes up. So if you want to do that, you had to release, then select the accented character that was appropriate. Um, of course, the shape is different too. I mean, it's it's a dramatic difference, uh, both in the font and then how tall the characters are, as well as how much spacing there is. Um, and really, the the end result is that you can type really fast on here. Um, I mean, of course, you can also see that there's a nice uh, little transparency, and it's very smooth. Uh, and the other thing is that the, the space bar will, grow, will glow the appropriate color, um, will show an orange bar underneath when you're going to insert a, uh, a word that's been predicted. Um, so that's that. Uh, I don't know what else there is to show. Of course, there's just general speed improvements. Um, oh, I, I remember one thing. I guess the, cam the uh, other important things are that the camera has some very big changes. So of course, there's integrated support for the front camera. So you can see me inside the light box. Um, and then back on the back camera, you can do things like focus to infinity uh, or leave it on auto. Um, and that's extremely useful if you're, if you know, you just don't want to wait for your autofocus to finish. You know, let's say you're 
you're taking f pictures of something that you know is beyond the hyperfocal distance. Uh, so of course you know focusing isn't going to do anything because it's at infinity as far as the camera is concerned. Um, so you gain a lot of time, and of course macro is useful for you know doing things like this, uh, where I'm you know I'm just a matter of inches away, um, or you could just do auto. Let's do that. Uh, the other big thing that I noticed they added is um, finally support for actually having the LED on uh, while doing the autofocus routine, and that sounds that sounds like it should be self you know self evident that you need to do that, but the previous version of Android didn't. Uh, so basically, you wound up with kind of a guess focus. Um, it was never quite clear whether it was running it as the camera illuminated right when the flash fired or what. So, I mean, now, now it does it right as you're focusing so you know whether it's going to be in focus or not. Uh, and that's, that's just a huge improvement. Um, the other really cool thing is the battery manager. Uh, so they made a lot of improvements to battery use. So back here, you can see this is kind of the way it always was. But if you tap on this, you can get a use uh, a plot of the actual battery charge versus time. And, see, and then you get a, a timeline view of what was going on. So I mean, you can see when the GPS was on, when Wi-Fi was on, uh, when the device was awake, and when the screen was on. And of course, when it's charging, there'll be a little green dot. Uh, and that's very similar to the way System Panel used to report things. But now it's done with um, you know, uh, APIs for phone signal, GPS, and Wi-Fi. So, I mean, as I've, I've restarted the phone here, so I don't have any history built up. But you'll see this thing go down and up uh, as you charge it and use it differently throughout the day. And, and that's pretty sweet. Um, it's amazing that, that other platforms don't have this, but it's really just super useful uh, for seeing things and, of course, how long you've been on battery. Um, other cool thing, I guess, in storage, you can see how, even though this is sort of external storage, it's presented as if it's USB storage. Um, and that's, that's everywhere. When you plug things in, it'll say USB storage instead of external storage. Um, so basically, there's a virtual partition in there. Uh, the other, I guess we could run a, a quick speed test to show you know like how much this differs from the Nexus One, um, for at least for loading our website. So let's let's go back here. All right, now let's tap at the same time. And they're connected to the same Wi-Fi and have cleared their cache. So and Flash is on. So. So, wow, that was pretty close. Um, it looked like the Nexus One was ahead for a while. Um, so we could be just limited by the Wi-Fi here, um, or it's just really, really close. Um, of course, scrolling is still not perfect in the browser, and that's a little bit disappointing. I wish, I wish that this was way better. Um, but, I mean, it's still, it still chugs. I mean, especially if you have Flash on. Uh, with Flash off, it's a, it's a lot better. And I'm not sure why it's, it's this bad on the Nexus S, but it's, you know, at least on here, it's kind of noticeable. Um, of course, let's see the actual profile, how much these differ. So, I mean, thickness is almost the same. Uh, you, know, you can see how much the height has changed, although you can't really see in the camera. Uh, of course, you've got the curve to it, nice ergonomic curve. Um, other interesting thing is underneath, you've got that NFC antenna. So if you tear the back off, you can see the contacts right here. Uh, and if you hold it in the light just the right way, you can see that circular pattern where the antenna resides. Um, so I think, I think that's a good overview of the Nexus S. Um, and thanks for your time.